Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Virtual College Fair. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Just a couple of announcements before we get started. Uh, I want to draw your attention to the Q&A button on your screen. Um, you can use the question and answer feature to ask questions of our presenters at any time. You don't have to limit your questions to the time that any particular university rep is speaking. Um, they have access to that the whole time. So, so ask away, um, ask questions about specific universities, about college admission, uh, really anything about a college application is fair game. So, uh, so use that, we'd love to hear from you. Your camera and your microphone are turned off so the panelists won't be able to see or hear you. Um, so that Q&A feature really is the best way to communicate with us. Also, this is just one of many different sessions happening today. So if you um, aren't already signed up for another session um, coming up after this, go ahead and do that too. You can do that on the same website where you registered for this. And this session is being recorded as are all of the sessions. So check back in about a week at strivescan.com slash WACAC. Again, strivescan.com slash WACAC, where you can find these sessions recording and register for more, more college fairs. Um, with that, I would like to introduce our first presenter from Regent University. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in today and uh, learning more about the college search process. Uh, my name is Jeannie Getz, and I will be speaking to you about the wonderful opportunities here at Regent University. So we are a, a four-year private Christian university. We're located in beautiful Virginia Beach, um, but we're also located online with all of our degree programs. Uh, over 4,400 of our 11,000 students are undergraduates who are either taking classes with us online, on campus, or they're commuting to campus. So our uh, uh, students represent all 50 states, 90 countries, and 40 denominations. So we truly do have a very diverse population here at Regent University. Uh, you can also see here our average test scores and GPA uh, at Regent, though. We are looking at the student holistically, considering um, each student as an individual. So we're looking at your extracurriculars, uh, the difficulty of your classes in high school, and other information that you're getting during the application process. We are test optional, although we do encourage students to submit uh, test scores if you have them. So Regent has a rich history uh, for more than 40 years as an award-winning regionally accredited liberal arts university. And for nine years in a row, we have been recognized by US News and World Report for offering the best online bachelor's program in Virginia. So this is a fantastic benefit uh, for our students now more than ever in this virtual world. And for students who uh, want that flexibility of learning online and maybe don't have the opportunity to relocate to Virginia Beach. We have curated uh, a comprehensive curriculum for which we are one of only 23 universities in this country to receive an A rating, which just means we're giving you a great foundation for those core general education courses. 90% of our full-time faculty hold that highest degree in their discipline. Uh, many of them are actively working in their field. So they're gonna bring that real world, world experience into the classroom and share with you as a student. Our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one. Uh, this small classroom dynamic is going to allow our students to build lasting relationships with their peers and receive a more personalized instruction from their professors. So these relationships are invaluable, you know, as students grow their network and are looking for jobs in their chosen field after graduation. So Regent, rest assured, uh, you will no, not just be like a number um, lost in a large lecture hall. So we realize uh, that figuring out finances is a huge part of, um, of where you attend uh, school. So Regent, we are committed to making our education very affordable. We rank in the top 5% of most affordable private Christian colleges and universities. 86% of our undergraduate students um, do receive some sort of aid. We have a number of institutional opportunities for aid and, and encourage our students to fill out that FAFSA to take advantage of federal aid. Uh, please visit this website here on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. It's a great resource for breaking down your cost based on your individual. And perhaps you're one of those students who prefers that flexibility of learning online on your own schedule. Um, tuition in this case is determined by course load in here at Regent. Um, 12 or more credits is considered full-time. So with over 135 programs of study, we do offer classes in the most popular and relevant majors all the way from art um, all the, uh, to STEM programs. So uh, we can also study uh, associate's degree all the way to doctoral programs. So for those students who are desiring sort of that more classical approach um, to college, we do offer a newly revamped honors college 
which is a very challenging curriculum in a cohort collaborative um, environment style, um, which is going to help foster your knowledge, character, and your skills. So at Regent, we offer our students many resources to ensure their success, whether you're living on campus, you're commuting, or you're studying online. And in some cases, some of these actually pertain to our alumni. One of my favorites is the Office of Career and Talent Management. Our students and alumni can receive professional help on the resumes, learn how to interview better, and find internships, externships, and jobs, as well as access our premium career assessments. We also understand that going to college is a 360 degrees experience. Um, at Regent, we have uh, many opportunities in place um, to get you involved outside of the classroom. Um, we have 35, I'm sorry, 55 student-led organizations, including Surf Club. We are very close to the beach. Uh, we have Moot Court. We do have an award-winning law school on campus and our student activities board. We do offer nine collegiate sports as well as club and intramural sports. We do have a state-of-the-art performing arts uh, center where students can either watch or participate in a number of productions throughout the year. And if you're interested in a military career, just know that about 30% of our students at Regent University are military affiliated. So we have lots of programs in place for you. Like I said, Regent is located in beautiful coastal Virginia. We are only a short drive from the boardwalk. And in the state of Virginia, there are 38 state parks and 21 national parks. So great places to explore and um, unwind over the weekends. Uh, Virginia is home to several historic sites, including nearby historic Williamsburg. Um, you can see here on the map that we are a short drive from the Outer Banks in DC as well. We encourage our students to schedule um, on-campus tours right now, or if you'd like to stay at home, you can take a virtual tour with us. You can apply online or call and speak to one of our admission counselors and they can often waive that application fee. We do operate on a rolling admissions. So if you are a, currently a senior right now, it is not too late to apply and be accepted for this fall. Uh, we are looking forward to helping you discover your future here at Regent. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you so much. And our next presenter is from James Madison University. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Erin. I am one of the system directors in the admissions office at JMU. I'm also a very proud JMU alum. So I like to say I've got the best job in the world because I get to talk about my favorite place all the time. Um, so just like you heard from my colleague at Regent, we are also in Virginia, but we are on the other side of the state. We're in Harrisonburg, Virginia in the Shenandoah Valley. We're one of the public universities in Virginia, and by Virginia standards, we're on the bigger side. We do have about 20,000 undergraduates. Um, average class size, though, is only 25, and our student-to-faculty ratio is only about 16 to 1. So we'd like to say you get the resources of that big public university, but still the feeling of a small college academically. We are Division I for all of our varsity sports, and we're Division I of the NCAA. We also have club and intramural sports, so all three levels for whatever you'd like to be interested in either participating in or watching. A lot of great resources on campus. Again, like you'd expect of a big public university, we've got multiple large libraries on campus, a student health center, counseling center, academic advising, career development resources. We also have some great learning resource centers, which are essentially like free tutoring. So maybe before you give that first big speech in your general communication class or turn in that first big paper for your general writing class, if you wanna get someone else to go over it with you, or if you're like me and math is not your favorite subject, so you put off taking that math class till your senior year and you procrastinate on your homework until it's the night before it's due. And so it's too late to talk to your professor, but you still need help. You can go to one of those learning resource centers. And as long as you're willing to ask for help, there are people that will bend over backwards to help you. Um, I was really bad at procrastinating math, but I did get an A in the class, so it worked out after all. We also like to talk about the food on our campus because we've been nationally ranked for over a decade and we're kind of obsessed with how good the food is. We've got some big national chains on campus, but we also have some very JMU specific dining locations. So we like to say great food, great atmosphere, great support on campus. There's a reason why so many students come to JMU, stay at JMU, and are happy with those choices. But of course, if you're coming to college, you're interested in the academics. We offer about 164 different academic programs broken up into the different divisions you see listed on your screen. Now, a lot of our students are gonna double major or have minors or concentrations in a variety of different disciplines. My degree from JMU, my major was communication studies. 
I had a concentration in public relations and a minor in human resource development. That's a lot of words that just mean I'm a people person. But like I said, it's very common for our students to have those diverse interests and they're encouraged and supported in pursuing them no matter what they might be. One of my favorite examples of that, just a couple of years ago, I met a young man who was getting ready to graduate. He had come to JMU with two very strong passions and he didn't wanna choose between, the, between them. So he was able to double major. And as a member of our honors college, he graduated in four years with degrees in chemistry and musical theater. Chemistry and musical theater, none of those classes overlapped. Typically you have students that maybe are really passionate about the sciences or passionate about the arts, not necessarily both but he really wanted to pursue both. And we found a way to help him um, make that happen. I don't know if he ever had time to sleep or eat or do anything besides go to class and do homework, but he was happy with his experience. For his senior thesis as part of the honors program, he actually had to write, he had to combine both programs. So he wrote a musical about chemistry. It's a little romantic comedy. If you go to bondedthemusical.com, you can actually see the staged reading of that musical. But then one of his good friends was a media arts and design major at JMU. And as part of her degree requirements, she needed to create a short student directed, student written, student acted film. So they got together, they adapted his musical script into a screenplay, filmed it, just a couple of days after graduation, they were heading off to a number of different film festivals to show their film. So great example of that cross disciplinary, interdisciplinary experience you can have at JMU. No matter what you want to study, you're going to have options. In terms of the application process, the application is online and we have both early action and regular decision. Now, early action is non-binding. So that means that students that apply by November 1st and check that early action box are gonna get a decision from us by early January. And if they're offered admission, they still have until May 1st to decide if they wanna accept that offer of admission or not. So just because you get in early, doesn't mean you have to accept that offer. Of course we want you to, but the choice is still yours. I do wanna call attention to those application deadlines. For the current cycle, we made some adjustments to our application deadlines to deal with the pandemic, but starting next year, we are going back to November 1st and January 15th. So for us and any schools you're looking at, make sure you keep an eye on dates and deadlines on website so you have the most updated information. Now, in terms of the decision process, the way we're making decisions is heavily based on your academics. We're looking at the information on your transcript to see, did you challenge yourself academically within the context of your high school experience? So that means, if you had the chance to take advanced placement or international baccalaureate or dual enrollment or honors courses, well, then we want to see that you did that. It's okay if you didn't have that chance, though. We're just looking to see that you challenge yourself based on what you had available for you in your core classes. Then we look at your grades, not your GPA. We're actually literally counting up the final grades in your core subjects. And the most competitive applicants to JMU are going to have mostly A's and B's in those classes. We've been test optional since 2017. And for us, test optional means we don't require or use test scores for admission purposes. We don't require them for admission to the Honors College, and we don't require them to be considered for any of our merit-based scholarships. So truly test optional. The only exception would be if you're one of our recruited athletes, and that's an NCAA requirement. That's not us. So the scores still don't have to come through our office. Um, and again, optional, we're not using them whether you send them or not. We're really just looking at your academics. So real quick, where we're located, like I said, we're on the other side of Virginia in the Shenandoah Valley, about two hours by car from Washington, DC, about two hours by car from Richmond. So we'd love to have you come visit us. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I am the counselor for most of you guys. I'll drop my information in the chat. You can also sign up for any of our virtual visits or our in-person visits on our website. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Erin. And next we will hear from DePaul University. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Annie Mills, and I am DePaul University's regional representative based in San Diego. And I work specifically with students here in California and students in Nevada as well. Uh, DePaul is a private Catholic institution in the heart of Chicago, Illinois, with an undergraduate population of about 14,500 students. While we are uh, located in the third largest U.S. city and we have big school resources, your academic experience at DePaul is going to be really personal, and that's by design. Our average class size is 22, and 90% of our classes have fewer than 40 students. Our student body itself at DePaul is very diverse and really reflects the diversity of our global community. 40% of our students come to DePaul 
from out of state with California actually leading the way. 44% of our freshmen are students of color and 35% of our freshmen are first in their family to earn a college degree. And while we are a Catholic school, the DePaul experience really is as Catholic as you make it. We have students from over 40 different faith and non-faith backgrounds on campus. As you may have guessed, we were named for St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, he dedicated his life to ending cycles of poverty and social injustice, and we really aim to keep that Vincentian tradition alive. We prepare all of our students to think and act with others in mind, using their higher education as a means to engage cultural, social, religious, and ethical values in service to others. Now, DePaul students split their time between two campuses in the city of Chicago. Our Lincoln Park campus, which we call our urban neighborhood campus, has a much more traditional feel with a quad, 11 residence halls, a student center, and a big library. That campus, the Lincoln Park campus, is where you'll be most likely to see a student going to class in a DePaul hoodie. A 15 minute ride away on public transportation is our campus in Chicago's financial district called our Loop Campus. At the Loop Campus, students take elevators to class instead of walking across the quad. And you'd be much more likely to see a student going to class in a blazer, maybe coming straight from an internship, job shadowing, or an informational interview in the city. Almost all of our students will take classes on both campuses. Uh, academically, our students pick from over 300 different options. Some of our most popular programs are housed in our College of Business and our conservatory style programs in theater and music. Our science and health focus options are very strong and we have accelerated programs for students who are interested in medical related professions. And then the College of Computing and Digital Media is our fastest growing school at DePaul and is home to film and television, animation and game design. We have a lot of honors program options at DePaul as well, a university wide program and and specific options for students in business and health sciences. Uh, we have a combined program with DePaul's Law School where students can get, uh, graduate with a bachelor's and a JD in six years instead of seven. If you're looking over this list and you think, wow, you know, I really don't know what I want to do. I like a lot of things. That's no problem. We're very double major and minor friendly across schools and colleges and we embrace change. As long as you're in good academic standing, you can change your major at any time. Um, our students are very involved on campus and we have over 400 different clubs and organizations for them to choose from. Uh, students cheer for our NCAA Division I Blue Demons, they play club and intramural sports, they participate in outdoor adventure programs, we have political, religious, and academically focused clubs and organizations, and about 10% of our students are involved in fraternity or sorority life. In one afternoon, you can attend a theater and music production on campus, go plan some campus activities um, in the afternoon, and sample the local fair to wrap up your day with the pizza the club. Uh, to help our students get used to the city, as we know many of our students are not from uh, the Chicago area, all of our freshmen take a seminar in their very first quarter called the Chicago Quarter Class, where they go on site visits and explore the city using one of over 100 different topics as a lens. You could take a class all about the Cubs or crime and politics in Chicago, improv in the city, or art and public sculpture. In that last class, you go on group excursions to the Art Institute and to the Bean, uh, but you'd also get out of the loop, get out of Lincoln Park, and explore murals in Pilsen and get to know how the history of that community impacts the experience of its residents and the art that they create. The Chicago Quarter is a great way for our students to explore new neighborhoods, to learn how to do practical city of Chicago things like use the L and use the buses, and then also it introduces you to the resources we have on campus like the Writing Center, the Career Center, and our Center for Students with Disabilities. We are very proud of our outcomes at DePaul. Six months after graduation, 91% of our students are employed or continuing their education. Uh, that's no accident, and it's due in large part to the fact that all of our students are required to do experiential learning in their junior year. Um, this usually looks like an internship, a study abroad program, or intensive community-based service learning projects. Um, our Career Center is also incredibly active, and they engage with students from really the minute they set foot on campus. You can meet with a career advisor one-on-one -on -one to practice your interview skills, um, meet with a career community if you're undecided, um, network with alumni through our alumni sharing knowledge program or connect with our local employers who come to campus to actively recruit our students. Now, if all of this sounds interesting to you, um, we'd love to have you apply to DePaul. Um, we are a common application exclusive school, which means there's no other way to apply to us via the common app, um, and I'm pleased to say that we do not have an application fee. Um, we use a holistic application review process, which means we're going to look at your essay, resume, activity summary, letters of recommendation, all of that in addition to your transcript and maybe a test score. We're really proud to have been test optional for 10 years for admission decision for our academic merit-based scholarships, which range anywhere from 14 to $25,000 a year, and we're test optional for our honors programs. 
If you are considering DePaul, feel free to think about how you want to highlight your own strengths in the application. If a test score doesn't reflect who you are as a student, or these days maybe you don't have one, that's no problem. Um, so thank you for being here. There are so many ways to connect with DePaul these, these days, and I obviously um, you know, haven't even talked about housing, study abroad, the volunteer work our students do, so much more to, to talk about. Um, so I'm very excited you're here learning about us and all the other schools in the session, and I look forward to working with you over the coming year. Drop any questions for me into the Q&A, and um, that's my time. Thanks. Thank you so much, Annie. And next, we'll be hearing from Southern Illinois University. Hello everyone and welcome to Southern Illinois University. Our campus is absolutely gorgeous. We are surrounded by the Shawnee National Forest located in Carbondale, Illinois. Beautiful area and it is known um, for so much outdoor activities and things like that. If you uh, picture the state of, of uh, Illinois, you'll see Chicago's at the very tip. We are a good five to five and a half hours south of that area. Um, at SIU, we have about a 13 to 1 student to teacher ratio, so our class sizes are small, and we have a, a total of about 10,000 undergraduate students uh, with over 100 countries represented. Um, we have over 200 programs, uh, majors, minors, specializations, whatever you choose, we pretty much have that and available for you. Um, we are very much known for our research facilities. Um, we actually have our freshmen who get involved in research right from the very beginning. Uh, we are truth and tuition. We invest in our students. We have over, um, of all of our students, over 90% re receive some form of financial aid assistance, and we offer over $10 million in scholarships and grants. So if you're a junior, make sure that you are applying early. Seniors, you still can uh, become admitted to SIU as we are rolling admission as well. Um, this is just a picture of some of our uh, scholarships. And we also have our housing is set up in suite style housing. So we have actually two separate rooms on each side with a bathroom in the center that share and each individual um, room has a, a sink to yourself. So we have one of the largest uh, residence halls available in colleges. You can see that second picture there, it's beautiful surrounding our campus lake. And we are, um, NCAA Division I sports. So we are very, our sports are, we take them very seriously. Um, we have a lot of alums that are, are extremely supportive of our community and we are part of the Missouri Valley Conference. And uh, we have our new women's soccer team, which is fantastic. Tuition, we would like for you to be um, uh, available uh, to see our tuition. Our tuition, our total, it runs around 25, 5, 26. If you actually look online, you might see a figure of 29 and that includes your living expenses. Those are things that you're accustomed to using right now. Um, but what we charge as a university will be the 96.38 for tuition for 30 credit hours. That's 15 credit hours each semester. That keeps you on track for graduating on time, which is extremely important. And then our fees of 5266, which covers everything um, from insurance to uh, bus use um, and getting in all our all of our activities as well. And then our room and board, which includes our anytime meal plan. So our students can eat as, many, as much or as little as they'd like out of two different dining halls. Buffet style includes vegan, vegetarian choices, and we also have a Mongolian grill there available to you. <clears throat> so to, in order to be a part of uh, being Slukey, the Southern Illinois experience, to complete an application to make SIU an option for you, there's a $40 application fee. And of course we do have um, fee waivers for certain situations. And all you need to do is send your official transcripts over to us and we'll have those evaluated for you and you'll have an answer within a few days. Uh, it's important for, for you to follow us to really see if we are a comfortable place for you. And you can do that by visiting our social media. I wish you good luck to your exploration phases of your college. And if there's anything I can help you with, I'll have uh, some information in the chat. You're welcome to reach out to me at siu.edu forward slash apply. And thank you and have a great day. Thank you so much, Julie. Our next presentation will be from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign.
Okay. All right. Hi, folks. Uh, so my name is Kenny Tran, and I am a regional admissions officer for the University of Illinois. I'm actually going to uh, drop my contact information just in case you need to contact me um, and you're uh, going around to other um, schools for these sessions. So with that, let's get started. So uh, again, I am a regional admissions officer for the University of Illinois, and I am actually based in San Francisco. <clears throat> so for over 150 years, our students, alumni, and faculty have really come to shape the world in many different ways, beginning with their involvement in our campus community, our students have really gone to innovate and inspire new and better solutions to global problems. So some examples of this include things like the world's first web browser, which was actually Mosaic back in 1993, which paved the way for the creation of the modern day internet as we know it. That eventually led uh, and paved the way uh, for other Illinois alumni projects such as YouTube, PayPal, Yelp, and Girls Who Code. Uh, for all of our tech buffs in the audience, you may have heard of inventions like LEDs, MRIs, integrated circuits, transistors, and even JavaScript, more Illinois creations. But if you actually fast forward to 2020, our campus researchers have actually developed a saliva-based test for COVID-19, a method that actually allows for results within just 24 hours, helping to really uh, ease the burdens of costly tests, time delays, and overall invasiveness of traditional nose swab testing. We actually have one of the most aggressive and robust testing systems for COVID-19 in higher education, where we're testing on average 15,000 people on campus every single day. And this actually previously accounted for about 2% of all testing that was being done in the United States at a given time. This is back in the fall. And actually, as of earlier this month on March 1st, we've actually begun to uh, been a, we've actually been uh, approved by the FDA to expand this testing nationwide, beginning with sending these tests to, uh, to be used by other public institutions uh, from the state of Illinois. At the University of Illinois, we have actually close to 34,000 undergraduate students with a total enrollment of over 52,000 students across all 50 states and 113 different countries, making us one of the largest and most diverse post-secondary institutions in the United States. About 25% of our undergraduates are domestic out-of-state students, with a majority coming from the West Coast, primarily from California, but more specifically from our Silicon Valley area. Uh, in terms of our location, we are actually located in central Illinois, which is about two hours south of Chicago and about two to two and a half hours from Indianapolis and St. Louis, respectively, giving students access to three major metropolitan areas within a reasonable day's drive. And what's really great about attending school at U of I is that you really get to enjoy living in the twin towns of Champaign as well as Urbana, which we consider a micro urban community, meaning that we have a thriving arts and culture scene that you might uh, find in a major city, but everywhere is still very accessible by walking, biking, or just simply driving. We also have an excellent transit system to get students around campus and the larger towns, as well as various uh, shuttles to Chicago uh, daily. We also have a fully operational campus airport that has daily nonstop flights to Chicago, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Charlotte, North Carolina, which is only about 10 minutes away uh, from driving from campus to, to access that uh, airport. As a number 15 public university in the country, we have over 150 majors across 11 different academic communities for you to choose from, ranging from our more established and well-known programs, such as the Granger College of Engineering, which is ranked sixth uh, in the country for engineering undergraduate programs, as well as our Geese College of Business, uh, ranked nine in the country with a number three accounting program, to even our newer and up and coming colleges, such as the School of Information Sciences, which houses one of our newest undergraduate majors in information sciences. Having such an expansive and diverse collection of majors really allows you to get a very specialized educational experience. So we don't just have a general business administration program, but you can actually choose to study very specialized areas of business, such as accountancy, finance, information systems, and supply chain management. An important aspect of uh, student life at U of I is, is your involvement in internships, research, and study abroad things that we really believe make for the robust learning experience during your time as an undergraduate on campus. You'll find that nearly 70% of students will participate in internships and or research of some kind during their time. Uh, and we also have a research park located on campus, one of the few college campuses to actually have one. And they actually house Fortune 500 companies, such as Capital One, State Farm, Yahoo, and Caterpillar directly on campus that employ undergraduate interns in a variety of industries. 
Within Research Park is Enterprise Works, which is a 43,000 square foot startup incubator that actually serves as a facility and resource center for budding entrepreneurs and has launched over 200 startup companies. In terms of actual academic research being produced at the university, as an R1 institution, students can start as early as their freshman year if they'd like, although sophomore through senior year is typically more common. Depending on when you actually conduct your research, I do like to say that you have a chance to be published in a real research journal before you can even legally buy a beer in some cases. For any of our engineers in the audience, the Granger College is also consistently recognized as the most cited in the entire world for engineering research. Uh, just really heavily showcasing the high volume of research that's currently um, being produced by our students and faculty. We're also home to one of the uh, largest research libraries in the United States, only trailing to Harvard and the Library of Congress. And finally, you can take your internship and research opportunities abroad if you'd like, or just simply take traditional classes, with about 30% of our students choosing to study abroad within a given year. Some abroad opportunities include studying marine ecology in the Galapagos Islands or doing an internship at a cheese factory in Rome. And with that, that is the end of my formal presentation, but of course I've sent my information through the chat that you're welcome to, uh, to utilize and, and contact me if you have any additional questions. And I hope uh, to encourage all of you to actually check out our virtual visit opportunities, which allow you to really get to experience school and learn about our different programs just from the comforts of your home. And so please continue to send any questions in through the chat and all of us, uh, I'm sorry, and through the Q&A and all of us can answer it. All right, thanks guys. Thank you so much, Kenny. And yeah, as Kenny mentioned, uh, we still have a bit of time. That was our last university presentation, but um, do send more questions to us. Uh, we'd love to answer some more questions through Q&A. Um, we have a, a couple, so um, so keep those coming. And uh, while we're we're waiting on your questions, we will um, I'll pose a question to our, our university reps who um, are here. So um, maybe you could each, if we go around and, and take twenty to thirty seconds to tell us an interesting or fun fact about your universities, perhaps a, a famous alum or a fun campus tradition, a top academic program. I don't know. You know cool things you can tell us. Um, let's go in the same order. How about um, Regent University goes first? Yeah, sure. So um, every Christmas, um, I think starting in November, we do have this really awesome kind of Christmas festival. Um, it's, it kind of reminds me of like a German Christmas festival where a bunch of local artisans come in and set up tents for about six weeks on campus. And we have millions of lights um, and we open it up to the community. So it's just, uh, it's real festive every afternoon and night. So we look forward to Christmas at Regent. Very cool. And James Madison University? Yeah, so I'll give one of my favorite traditions. Um, it surrounds athletics. Um, it started with basketball, but it's progressed to football. Anytime we score in football, whether it's a full touchdown, the extra point, whether we get the field goal, any, any kind of points, we throw purple and gold streamers in our stadium. And we've got a big, beautiful stadium that holds 25,000 people. So it makes a beautiful sight to see all these streamers raining down. In fact, you cannot find purple and gold streamers at any dollar store within a probably 60 mile radius of campus when there's a home game weekend. Um, so we get them sent to us from all over the country. Very cool. And DePaul University, yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing that always at least brings a chuckle um, to me is that we are a Catholic school and our mascot um, are the blue demons. So Catholic school demon mascot doesn't always make a lot of sense, uh, but it comes from um, the the turn of the, the century, the into the 1900s, when we had a football team, um, we don't anymore, but they would wear uniforms with a very large D for DePaul on the front. The announcers would say, um, the D-men are marching down the field. And that's how um, it kind of transitioned into our demons and then blue demons specifically today. I did not know that, Annie. We learn something new every day, don't we? <laughs> Southern Illinois University. Uh, our, our mascot is the Saluki, and the Saluki is uh, a sighthound. It is known for a very fast speed. They can go for miles at a time. And what the interesting thing is, is they always lead our football team off in, in every game. So it's actually a very fun event that we have. Great. Thanks, Julie. And last but not least is Kenny from UIUC. You're on mute still, Kenny. Thanks. Okay, so um, this, I can't verify that this is true or not, but um, apparently home 
homecoming was um, established um, on the University of Illinois campus. And it's a big tradition that uh, still goes on to this day. We have alums coming from all over the world uh, back to the state when um, it's football season and it's homecoming week. Um, it's a really big um, celebration that really just celebrates kind of the legacy of the university and, and our students. Uh, so I can't verify that this actually started because I know many schools uh, say very similar things, but I also can't prove that it's not right. So there you go. Thank you, Kenny. My favorite facts are the ones that we're not sure if they're true. That's that's fantastic. Um, we still have a bit of time left, so let's try uh, one other question. Um, maybe, um, maybe, or actually, if each of you could just give a tip of advice. We we have a few minutes, so um, try to keep your your advice a little bit brief. But um, just somebody who's beginning the college search process, what's what's something that they definitely need to keep in mind? Uh, again, back to um, Ginny from Regent. Sure. So um, I guess the first thing I would do if you haven't already is to go ahead and create a brand new email address um, that you use just for the college search process. So, you know, iCloud, Gmail, something free. Um, and this is the email that you give to um, people like us. Um, if you want more information that way, uh, what we're giving you isn't getting lost in your personal email and you can kind of keep track of your compartmentalize your different lives. I think it's a lot easier that way. It's a great tip. Erin uh, from James Madison. I would say she's still probably one of my favorite tips because that is such a good piece of advice for so many reasons. Um, so I'm gonna give you two tips. One, breathe. Throughout this whole process, remember to breathe. The other thing, ask questions. Ask questions of people like us who are admissions reps. Ask questions of teachers or counselors or administrators at your high schools. Ask questions of all the other adults in your life about what path they took, what they liked about their school, what maybe they would have done differently. That'll help you kind of piece together the image you have for what you want for your experience. Thank you, Erin. Annie from DePaul. Yeah, I think my piece of advice is to um, is to remember that when you're applying to college, um, your application comprises so much more than just a test score or just a GPA. Um, you know, we ask for uh, many schools ask for all of these pieces of information to get to know you better, um, and they don't want to just hear about you from you. They want to hear about you from other people. Um, so much, I think, when you're in your senior year and you're working on your applications and your resumes, it's it's really um, in your essays, you know, that is what the big focus is on. When in reality, that's only one piece of the puzzle. Um, and there's so many other ways for you to show how you've progressed, how you've improved, how you've changed, how you've dealt with struggle um, across um, your high school um, careers as you're now, you know, going on to applying to college. So um, make sure that before you press submit on your application, you've taken yourself up in the airplane, right? And are looking at your app at that 30,000 um, foot view so that you see all of the pieces of yourself that you're putting forward um, in, in the application to, to any school you send it off to. Thank you, Annie. And now Julie from SIU. I would say the best piece of advice I can give you is do not fear failure. There's no such thing as failure. Step off the curb, get that ball rolling. The faster you get that ball rolling, the brighter your life is going to be. I'm not going to lie to you. You're going to run into obstacles the rest of your life, and that's okay. The secret is how you handle those obstacles is what will determine your level of success. So just get out there and find that college that makes you most comfortable. Great advice, Julie, thanks. And last, Kenny from UIUC. Yeah, so my uh, advice comes when it comes to your essay, which is really the only uh, part of uh, the application where you actually get to speak to, to, the, to the reader. Uh, and so I say typically after you've completed a draft of your college essays, you can generally cut out the first half. I find that it's typically unnecessary fluff that has very little impact on the reader, but the hearty meat of your responses come in the middle or the near end. Um, to be honest with you, students often start off with quotes and, and um, long-winded kind of uh, responses to the, to the prompt that is really just fluff. And, and so as admissions officers, um, we typically, you know, we I, I honestly do don't care about that long winded quote, long winded quote from Shakespeare, Dr. Seuss, a dead president that you had to dig up on Google, trim the fat, and really give us kind of the juicy details about why you want to attend the university, and cut out those quotes that make very little impact on the reader. Great, thank you so much, Kenny. Um, and we will end it. With that, so thank you all so much. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you to our panelists for presenting today. Um, I learned some great things about each of your universities, and I hope 
those attending did too. Um, when we close the window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. I hope you will take just a minute to give us some feedback. Also, this is just one of uh, many sessions being hosted. Um, there's one more college fair session coming up after this. So if you're not registered to view some college presentations, then go online, sign up, uh, join us for one more hour. Um, and also in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as recordings of all of the other college presentations online at strivescan.com slash WACAC. Again, strivescan.com slash WACAC. Um, we really enjoyed seeing you all today. Thank you so much. Thanks again to my friends for presenting and you all have a great afternoon. Thank you.